Hello and welcome to me telling you that this week's episode of Do Go On is brought to you by, just in case you skip the ad bit at the start, our comedy festival show right here in Melbourne. We are doing four live podcasts and they are on sale now, Saturday afternoons, two o'clock at the European Beer Cafe, all throughout the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. You can buy a ticket to one show, to two shows, three shows, or you can get a season pass and come to all four shows for the price of three. It's a bajan. Oh, it's so bajaning. <laughs> um, tickets are available now uh, on our website, or you can just click the link in the description of this episode, where we'll also have links to Matt's stand-up comedy festival show. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> weird. <laughs> Monkey House at the Victoria Hotel and Jess's stand-up comedy festival show. <laughs> Nearly. <laughs> Is that right? No. What's it called again? Almost. Almost. I mean... <laughs> I nearly got it right. <laughs> and that is on at the Greek Centre. Uh, check it out. We'd love to see you there. It's the best time of year in Melbourne. And this ad has been 100% rehearsed. <laughs> see you soon. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network. Visit planetbroadcasting.com for more podcasts from our great mates. And welcome to another episode of Do Go On. My name is Dave Warnicky and I'm here, as always, with Matt Stewart and Jess Perkins. Hello, Dave. Hello, Jess. Hello, Dave. Hello, Matt. Great to be here again. Sorry, we're fighting again. <laughs> Who? Uh, did I do something? Was no. it me? Um, Matt and I are fighting. Oh, right. Sorry, we're not talking well, to each other. Well, tell Matt that you're fighting with him. <laughs> no, you're the. Im- I'm the one fighting with him. You tell Matt I'm you're fighting, fighting with him. You're fighting with me? Dave. Jess? <laughs> God, that would be so tedious for a full oh episode. Oh, my God. Ah. Tell Matt my very funny joke I just made. <laughs> He's pretending he can't hear it. Make Matt laugh at that. <laughs> it's great to be back in the studio. This is our first episode that we've recorded after our Christmas break. Yeah. We have had we haven't seen each other in three weeks. And I, when I saw Jess, I said, is this the longest time we haven't seen each other in the last four years? <laughs> I feel like it might be. I think it might be. Is that wow. sad? Close. Probably. Has it been three weeks? I don't even realise it's been that long. It's good to see you again. So. No, that is true. Before Christmas, I've been away. Yeah. I've been in Tasmania. Yeah. For about three weeks. <laughs> so it's weird. <laughs> weird that it's been that yeah, long. That's right. yeah. We all went out and saw a bit of a uh, bit of Australia. Yeah. yeah. I went north. I went south. I went not as far north. <laughs> yeah. You know, all four corners of the of the globe. So arguably, I was way better because I went a bit further. Mm. Yeah, I think so. So there's that. Yeah. It's absolutely true. Just saying. But I, I had to car cross water. You did. So I, uh, think I am the better one. I think I oh I'm, I think I did tell you. We uh arrived in Byron Bay on New Year's Eve. Byron Bay, a very popular place uh all year round, really, particularly New Year's Eve. Um as Falls Festival is happening there at the time. And we got there to realise that our accommodation had been booked for the thirty first of January. <laughs> and who booked that? Uh, not me. Okay. No, all the ones I booked were, um, which was every other place we stayed on the oh, trip, that's lucky. were correctly booked. You just give him a little bit of responsibility to make him feel good. So did you just book that one? Are you going to go up for January? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, if we weren't going to get a refund, I was like, well, we're going back. Um, but we found the, literally the last Airbnb available oh, and it well was done. a... Little shack. It called itself Shabby Chic. It was just shabby. Yeah. Um, in a caravan park. Oh, that's and there great. were cockroaches. Oh, that's living. And the floor was dirty. If so it was the, a holiday. If you want to get the New South Wales experience, you've got to <laughs> yeah. have cockroaches. You simply must. Yeah, they're huge up there. Yeah. They are. They're massive. Aren't they known as the cockroaches, maybe? One of their sporting teams or something, the cockroaches? I think maybe they're rugby. They're, is there a rugby team? I would hate to play for league. the cockroaches. I might be making that up. Maybe that's what Queenslanders call them. They have a real rivalry, Queensland and New South Wales. Yeah. Feels weird being down here and not really hating anyone. We're like the third sibling. <laughs> we are. Hey, guys, What's fight that? with us. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be pissed off at us. Oh, okay. Don't worry about it. Let us know if you need anything. We're yeah. pathetic. We are pathetic. <laughs> we need to grow up. <laughs> We need to read a book. Yes. Uh, no, I, I think we should have a three-way with Queensland and New South Wales and really get something going. Okay. 
Really? Mm. All right. Anyway, um, good to be back from our holidays. It is good to be back from our holidays. Uh, I'm off to a flying start. We are. Uh, very much so. So this show works, Jess, if that's what you're about to ask yes. me. Yes. One of the three of us re- uh, researches a topic, often suggested by a listener, and we research that topic with all we've got. Then mm-hmm. we bring in the report that we've come up with. With all we've got. We bring it in with all we've we, got. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we drag it in. in. My God, we're on the second floor here. We're Honestly, like, it's exhausting. We're like that guy, Abacus or whatever, who pushed a rock up a hill. Someone correct me. What's the guy's name? It's not Abacus. Abacus. Abacus Finch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't at me. And um, <laughs> so we, we... I love to kill a rocking chair. <laughs> 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 I love it. Oh, uh, that's A classic. <laughs> so we all... We, one of us has a report done this week. It's me. And then we tell that report to the other two while they normally annoyingly interject, <laughs> according I to listeners. don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you mean. Uh, and we get onto the topic with a question. This week, I'm asking the question because it's my topic. And the question is, very self-indulgent, <laughs> oh, no. which band have I seen live more than any other? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What's the name of that cover band? <laughs> <laughs> at like the Maribyrnong Hotel or some <laughs> shithole. At Adam 13 or something like that. <laughs> Taco. Some I knew you'd reference Taco. Taco. I, I actually would have seen Taco quite a few times back in the day at the Edgy and other such places. The Sandy. Oh, I couldn't think of any of your actual haunts. Maribyrnong. But your one was the nut, wasn't it, Jess? Yeah. Your, okay. Uh, Mar- no offence, Maribyrnong, but. You know what you did. And um, <laughs> most uh, live that, well, you've already done Tism, but you couldn't have seen them that many times. Uh, yeah. I think so, them four times, Tism. Seen, I reckon I've seen this band be pushing up to 15, something wow. like that. Wow. Okay, are they Aussie? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, my mind is going completely blank. Oh, my, I was just listening to... Uh, you on Josh Earl's podcast a few months ago a few months ago with uh, Tim Rogers from UMI. It's not UMI. Oh. Great band. Seen them. I would have seen them a good half dozen times. Uh, this band. Is it Nick Cave? It's not Nick Cave. Can we have a, like, a letter? Uh, F. Friends will wrong? It is Friends yes! will wrong. Yes! <laughs> Friends will wrong. 15 times. I reckon, yeah. Amazing. Including festivals. They were at the first festival I went to in 1998 uh, at the uh, music bowl called Pushover. And it was sick. Awesome. Oh, that's great. I would have. I think I've seen them twice. Put on a Very, good show. Oh, so fun. Very. One, the first time was at so, another sort of like all ages festival at Luna Park. Oh, oh yes. I, I reckon that, that might have been a, an, another one of the pushovers or push on maybe. Oh yeah, it might have been a pushover. I think actually. Yeah. yeah it was about two thousand and four or five, maybe. Yeah, I was pretty young. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Th- great band. Very fun. But I don't know too much about the history of them, to be honest. Oh, cool. Well, I'm about to tell you about that. It just reminded me of I'm going through my brain all the times I've seen them. But one of the times I saw them was after the Saints lost their 2010 grand final. Oh. So they booked it. They booked the weekend after the grand final, but because it was a draw, they had to replay the game. And I bought a ticket to it thinking, oh, it's not. It's the week after grand final. Yeah, so it was such a weird <laughs> show where I'm real sad. But <laughs> they put on a good show, I remember. Uh, all the same, they cheer me up quite a bit. <laughs> and the venues in in the, at the corner in Richmond, so oh I walked God. from the MCG to the ground oh. amongst all these celebrating. We still wearing fans. a jersey? Oh. Uh, well, I don't think I, I would. I would have been wearing a, a hat and a scarf or something, probably. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Probably face painted. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so dejected. Like, all right, let's go see friends. <laughs> probably holding like bl- red and white and black <laughs> balloons. <laughs> you wearing like waving a, a flag. <laughs> The red and white drift off, but you're just left with the black. Yeah. <laughs> Covering up your premiership tattoo. Yeah. <laughs> this is embarrassing. I already changed the date from last week. <laughs> now we didn't even win. Uh, so this topic was suggested by Michael Nados, who wrote in the suggestion hat, a long and interesting career, my favourite Australian band. Oh, great. Anyway, let's get into the topic, uh, Friends of Rome. They were formed in Newtown in Sydney in 1992 by singer Jason Wally and bass player Alexis Feltham, who were childhood friends. At the time of their formation, Jay was uh, the son of academics, still is, I suppose, uh, was studying philosophy at Sydney University. And the band formed to enter a university battle of the bands and there was no plans to keep the band going after that. I was just like, we'll bring it together for a one-off battle of the bands and then it'll um, move on with their lives. Oh, that's fun. Uh, The band was named after Jay's pet rat, 
who um, <laughs> was in turn, in turn named after French physicist Augustin Jean Fresnel's invention, the Fresnel ROM. <laughs> According to Merriam Webster, a Fresnel ROM is a rhombic prism of glass used to transform plain polarized light into circularly polarized or elliptically polarized light. Yep, uh huh. Yeah, that makes sense. I knew where I knew that from. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So elliptics are very positively light. Yeah, mm-hmm. light, light beams and. I, I think I re- maybe elliptical. I read it was it's used in um, like um, lighthouses and stuff. Maybe I'm not sure. But- I, mean, I mean, it sounds fascinating, and if you know anything about it, I'm sure it's really interesting. But I didn't understand ninety percent of those words. For I have an arts degree. Yes. You know. Well, which is what Jay was doing as well, majoring mm. in philosophy. Mm. Jay remembers uh, the influences that got him into the idea of starting a punk band, saying, The punk music really started appealing to me by listening to Australian punk bands like The Meanies, The Hard-Ons and Nursery Crimes. They were also doing all-ages shows way before all-ages was a popular thing to do. For the Battle of the Bands, the lineup was rounded out by guitarist Ben Costello and drummer Bruce Braybrook, and they ended up coming second in the Battle of the Bands. <gasps> And this modest success led to the band continuing on and eventually to singer Jay dropping out of uni. Oh, wow. Uh, original... I mean, you only came second, mate. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we're on, the, we're on the highway to success. Yeah, punk. Australian punk. This is going to pay the bills. <laughs> well, probably more than philosophy, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, to be fair. <laughs> uh, original... Take that, philosophy. Yeah. They're not listening Ow. to us. Original drummer Bruce, I bet they are. Uh, please email do go on pod at gmail.com and tell Jess philosophers love podcasting too. Mm, I want to, I want that email. Yes. Original drummer Bruce made way for Carl Persky, and in 1994 they released their first CD, an EP called Dick Sandwich. <laughs> he was like, "Quit my job, and I'm <laughs> the big time with it." <laughs> well, he recalls telling his parents about the change in direction. Uh, quote. I told my father I was going to be dropping out of university, going on the dole and starting a punk band with our first EP called Dick Sandwich. I showed him the cover of it with the character on the front eating a sandwich full of severed penises. (laughs) You'd never seen a more disappointed human in all your life. (laughs) Broke his dad's heart. Uh, The band were told by Link from the Meanies that it would be crazy to pay more than $500 to record an album. But according to Jay, they spent twelve hundred oh. uh, recording Dick Sandwich, and it quote sounds much worse than any Meanies five hundred dollar record. <laughs> just yeah. to just to um, clarify there too, twelve hundred is more than five hundred. Yes, thank you. And it sounds worse. Yeah, amazing. I did, I just, I did some maths. Yeah, just wanted to. Just not point out to everyone that I yeah. can do it. Well, <laughs> I can I can blast light through a prism if I want to. <laughs> yeah, I can do an optical figure and dig and It's a euphemism, is it? <laughs> I, I can, can blast, blast some light. Can I blast light through your prism? Sorry, Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay, more I bid a... you farewell. <laughs> I, I just mean, can I use you, John? Yeah. Can I blast light through your prison? Your porcelain prison. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you're saying prison. Oh. Which in a way, a porcelain prison mm. is a toilet. <laughs> they should make prisons out of porcelain. Nah, that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> what? You can break it, right? <laughs> Yeah, but I'd look nice. <laughs> do you get covered in shit if you do it? I'd look nice. <laughs> That's a problem in prison. <laughs> Don't look nice. Just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, prisons are all very ugly. Yeah, make them nicer. <laughs> make them pretty. Make them, make them more attractive. Put make a them... rug down yes. or something, you know? Mm. Zhuzh it up. Mm. Add a throw cushion. Bit of wall art. Make it a place where you'd like to go and live. <laughs> <laughs> make it out of porcelain if you want. I don't mind. Uh, the album has been derided, the EP at least, has been derided by the band and others for sounding like it was recorded under a doona. <laughs> <laughs> because it was. <laughs> but despite this, the independent release sold out its run of a few thousand copies and is now somewhat of a collector's item. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm an owner of. Oh, you've, you've got one? Cool. Little retirement fund. Yep. Where did you pick up your copy? JB Hi-Fi. <laughs> oh, wow, it's pretty hard to get them. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think they, yeah, it was just the only one there and I... And as a fan, I wonder if that was a re-release or what? Because I I wasn't into them when they kicked off. I didn't mm. get into them till later in the nineties. As a fan, listening back to it compared to their other stuff, is it not as is the quality bad? It's different in a few different ways. I mean, compared to the band now, Jay's the only member who's still around, the singer. 
Um, and they, they used to do a lot more slap bass in the early <laughs> days. But also it does like the, the same. Not everyone can do that. <laughs> So. Well, that's the cool thing about as the bass, like there's been a couple of replacement bass players since and they've been sick at playing all the different styles of bass, which I always find impressive. Seeing them live with a newer bass player, they play an old song and they're pulling out all the slap <laughs> stuff. Just, just punk music with the Seinfeld theme mixed in. <laughs> 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 What's the deal with telling your parents to go fuck themselves? <laughs> 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 No, that well, speaking of TV themes, that old, that first EP did have their version of the Home and Away theme. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I have heard that. I didn't realise that that was from that. That's awesome. When they released the EP, national youth radio station Triple J, Jess's employer, told the band to, quote, grow up. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like something we'd say. <laughs> Jess, have you ever told any new young up-and-comers to grow up? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we have Triple J Unearthed, um, which is a whole other station now as well, and like people starting out upload their music there, and people can jump on and review it, and us presenters review a lot of stuff too. That really helps out um, young up and comers. And all of my reviews just say "Grow up." <laughs> I give everyone half a star. I say "Grow up." Grow up, read a book. <laughs> What's the lowest star rating you've ever given? Oh, like four. I'm very kind. <laughs> I thought you might be very I don't nice. want to give everybody... Like, they're all trying their best. That's the thing If I really it. don't like something, I won't review it. Yeah, that makes sense to me. I'll just review stuff I like. Because it's just... It gives everyone a little... Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's right. Not as good as the Seinfeld theme. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. That'll be my next one. <laughs> but that, I think... Because uh, it sounded like you were diminishing the nice words you were saying for any of them listening. But then... You went on a sort of change there because you're like, if I haven't re- reviewed you, I probably hated it. I can't possibly listen to everything. You've listened to everything. <laughs> I've listened to everything <laughs> and I've written like 10 reviews. So <laughs> grow up. In October that year, 1992, um, they released a three track, hang on, 1994, sorry. They released a three track single called Sorry About the Ruse mm. uh, on their label, which they called How Much Did I Fucking Pay for This Records? <laughs> And this included a cover of Depeche Mode's Just Can't Get Enough, which they changed the lyrics from Just Can't Get Enough to How Can I Fuck the System When I Just Can't Get It Up. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a pretty, it's political. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Which I like about it. Makes it. you think. Yes. Makes you chuckle. Yeah. And then it makes you think. Yeah. And then it, and then it makes you grow up, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. They took Triple J's yeah. advice and yeah. they've, they've grown up very quickly. And once within again, a few on, months. on behalf of Triple J, you're welcome. I remember when I – so I think that was maybe un- released as a final initially, maybe, but uh, when I saw them in 98 at that uh, pushover festival, I remember them just flinging CD, cardboard CD, copies of it into the crowd. And I – Got another one of those, also funding my retirement. (laughs) Perhaps naively, the band sent a letter to Depeche Mode's publishing company asking, oh, would you mind if we use this song and change the lyrics? And according to Jay, the singer, they sent back a very firm no, no, you cannot. You do not have permission. And that's when we realised, oh, wow, we should just have never asked. Yeah. (laughs) And then we went and did it anyway. (laughs) The back cover of the CD is the rejection letter printed out. (laughs) Or it's it's actually a fax. A rejection fax. A rejection fax. The most brutal fax. Yeah. The most brutal form of rejection comes in a fax for sure. Because it sort of prints out slowly (laughs) and you're like, oh, oh, oh. oh, oh, oh." Man of a thousand noises starts again. (laughs) That's a fax. Dear friends of rum, stop. Please stop. (laughs) Stop. Stop. (laughs) Yeah, you're right. Rejection telegram would be worse. Rejection carrier pigeon because then you have to look that pigeon in the eyes and it knows. And it can't look you in the eyes looking at its feet. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh, I'm all sad. (laughs) I can't. I'm so sorry. I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I think you're great, but don't don't shoot shoot the messenger. messenger. (laughs) That's good stuff. Uh, in the early 90s, the Californian punk scene was exploding and the, that sort of skate punk scene, which I think, Dave, was a, you're into that a bit as well, a bit later on. Yeah, I love all that stuff. Yeah, NoFX, et cetera. Jess, do you ever get into that kind of stuff? No, I'm very wholesome. This is wholesome At stuff. At 13, I was very into Delta Goodrum. Oh, uh, that is wholesome. That is very wholesome. She was born to try. Yeah. Aren't we she like, learned to love. All... You know? <laughs> she had a very, very big album. Yeah, I can't stand her now. But was it born to try? Yeah. Was it learn to love? I think it was this. Da 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 da
Down it at the start while you're doing the OCD. Great. Da, 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 I mean, da, da. the other great song of 2003. <laughs> <laughs> so that Californian punk scene was exploding. Australia was one of the biggest scenes uh, for it outside of America that really got into it, especially the American bands and, and, and also had a bunch of our own. So it meant Friends was able to support a bunch of touring bands, including Bad Religion, The Offspring, Pennywise, and Blink-182. Damn. Uh, in 1990, who was the first concert I ever went to was Blink-182. Really? Supported by Body Jar and Unwritten Law and Caustic Soda. It was, That's cool. I remember Taco. <laughs> Taco was there. I probably saw Taco the night before. Uh, <laughs> But I remember, I didn't, I don't think I really got how it was meant to go. So I got there and Caustic Soda, the opening act, were playing. And it was an all ages show. I would have been 14. So he just went real hard and everyone was going hard. And I remember the band were like, wow, this is great. We played the overages show last night and <laughs> everyone was too cool. So thanks so much for getting into it. We love the kids. <laughs> and I was fucking knackered by the time Blink came on. <laughs> you just pooped yourself. <laughs> the Blink are like, what the fuck's wrong with these kids? You're all having a nap. <laughs> They also probably were like clearly the worst band on the like I, I like them great band but, but they're l- as live, a live act they're, they're not... sort of pretty clumsy yeah mm. I think they got better but this was you know it was pretty early in their career uh, in 1995 the band released their first LP coughing up a storm <laughs> on Shock Records in Australia around this time they supported one of Dave's favorite bands No Effects whose band leader Fat Mike also had a burgeoning record label Dave named Fat Records. Uh, fat Rec Records, sorry. <laughs> and uh, Fat Mike really liked Frenzel and he um, put out one of the tracks off the album as a single, as a seven-inch single in America, Four Leaders, which is a, a song about goon. Uh, <laughs> Australian uh, just... boxed wine. Four, that's why it's called Four Leaders. They sort of just go through a bunch of different kinds of goon, so that's fun. Um, Alexia makes you sexier. <laughs> So they were also featured on the Fat Records compilation, Survival of the Fattest, which opened up more doors for the band. This is a quote from Jay. I guess the Fat Records thing helps us wherever we go. Uh, their compilations they put out sell way more records than any of the bands on them. So everywhere we go, the kids know at least two songs. <laughs> Just, I guess it's, hand, it's the, it shows how like important something so, like so that is. Open with one and close the open with the other. Mm. Yeah. But I, like, I think a lot of... People go to the show. Well, the shows I go to, everyone's singing every word to every song, and they play. Oh, now songs absolutely, set. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess early days and going to America and that sort mm. of stuff. I read somewhere a more modern quote from Jay saying someone asked him about how, uh, how they go touring in America, and he's like, "It's kind, of, it's fun, but it can be hard. And as he's getting older, it's harder to do because their fan they got quite a few listeners over there, but they're spread out." in all these little towns. He's like, if we could just get a few of them to come to one big central show, it would be sick, it would be huge. Mm. But we've got to go around and play all these little shows instead and it's pretty can be pretty draining to do 40 dates of, of small shows over and Oof. over. At his age, he's in, I guess he's in his 40s now, can you even, can you even imagine? Uh, <laughs> no. As you get so close to your 30s. Are you your 30 yet? Not yet. Not yet. Close. Just over six months, baby. Shut up. It's fine. It's okay. It's, it's. I'm fine with it. Yeah, it's the beginning of the end. It's all good. It's, um, it's not. It's the beginning of the end. It's, it's also the start of the beginning. That is the new fourteen. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't want to be fourteen again. Yeah. Well, that's no. a shame, isn't it? Because you're about oh, to be. Oh no! I had my braces off by the time I was fourteen. So yeah. Wow, right. pretty young to get on. <laughs> I had them on at eleven. Okay, you had a you had a shocker. <laughs> yeah, they were real bad. Anyway, they had to take a. They took an X-ray of my hand before doing my braces because that tells them how much more growing I had to do. Oh, really? Yeah, because if you have braces too early and then you keep growing, it can just mean that they move more than they... Oh, right. Are you sure they didn't think you were a dog and seeing if you had a, <laughs> had a big paw? Who's <laughs> this big boy? Oh, it's a, hey, it's come a here. little girl. Come here, Jess. Come here. Come here. Let me see your teeth. Let Did you go to a, a vet ah. dentist? Yeah. It was cheaper. They said, just get it a gnaw on this. <laughs> Fix it right up. Yeah, yeah. Have one of these denter bones. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'd go back to 14 because I don't have to deal with braces. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd go back to the vet in a heartbeat because they were very nice. And they gave me a treat. <laughs> <laughs> Schmacko. Uh, after coughing up a storm, the drummer Carl left the band. I'm not sure exactly what the story was, but the secret tracks at the end of the album include some semi-threatening voice messages left 
for the <laughs> band by him. Um, so it seems like it wasn't on good terms. <laughs> <laughs> How do you be semi I did love that. I, I, I never even, I actually never even put together. I'm, I'm probably going to kill you. I listened to that album a lot when I was younger and I, it's sort of a bit passive aggressive. I'd have to listen to it again, but I remember towards the end he's, he's like, call me back. Though you probably won't. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> I was kind of like, oh, man. <laughs> That's possibly sad without knowing the story. I like to think that he did something bad <laughs> and they weren't just being mean. Yeah. Semi-threatening. <laughs> please, please <laughs> return my call. <laughs> 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 All right, mate. Okay. That's it. Restraining order. Yeah, we're going to take this to the police. Please call me back. I, le- I left my drumsticks in your car. I'd have to listen to it. I'm pretty sure they were <laughs> like it was on a roller coaster. Some of it was like, that's it. You know, if I ever get a hold of you. But then I think well, I'd have to. I'm going on a vague Please. memory. <laughs> Just RSVP to my wedding, please. (laughs) It's very expensive per head. (laughs) I just need to know. Please. All right, call me. (laughs) So they've gone through two drummers um, pretty quickly. Their follow-up album, Not So Tough Now, included the band's third drummer, uh, Nat Nike. I realise I've never said that out loud. It's a tricky one. No, I don't know. N-Y-K-Y-R-U-J. And the album was another step forward in production values with producer Tony Cohen at the helm. Uh, Cohen had already produced a bunch of other big name Aussie acts by that stage, including Do Go On favorites like Paul Kelly, Nick Cave and Tism. And the album was the band's first to make the Aria charts, peaking at number 53, and included the single Punch In The Face, which was the band's biggest hit up to that point. The album was also released in the US and Japan, and the band toured in support of it, building up a solid following in both those places. The secret track on the album had lyrics referencing guitarist Ben Costello. Uh, Here they are in full, get the beeper ready. To see what he has done, what has he done? Nothing at all. Ben is a fuckwit. He's a cunt. Ben's a cunt. Ben is a fucking silly cunt. Ben's a fucking stupid cunt. Ben is a fuckwit. Cunt. Ben is a cunt. Ben is a fuckwit. Fuckwit. After the album's release, (laughs) Ben left the band. (laughs) According to their website at the time, he mysteriously disappeared. Many rumours have circulated about his disappearance, but no one really knows where he is. That's the official word. Right. But I think he actually just left due to uh, pursuing animal activism and going to study at university. And I think it was all on good terms. It was all just a bit of a joke. So that right. song wasn't actually... No, I think it was all... T- he was playing guitar on it. I think it was just <laughs> all in a bit of fun, but it was... <laughs> He's playing guitar, bopping along while they're calling him a... We'll, we'll come in and do the lyrics after. You just play the riff. <laughs> this is great, guys. Yeah, I love it. When really are we doing you. the lyrics? I don't know. We'll let you know. We'll let you know. It's yeah, right. you can actually, you can clock off. Do you know what? You can, you've done so well today. <laughs> Why don't you have the afternoon off? Go, just get outside. See some, do some activism. You love activism. You love activism. Do it. Do it full time. <laughs> Leave. <laughs> Leave and never come back. His replacement was 18-year-old Lindsay McDougal, a.k.a. The Doctor. Apparently, the young doctor didn't tell his mum that he was leaving to tour with the band. And when he returned, he was uh, he found that his key no longer opened the front door. <laughs> oh, mum. Mum changed the lock. Yes. Yeah, so this story was referenced on their 1997 album, Meet the Family, which included the single Mum Changed the Locks. <laughs> which is a bit of a hit. Mum. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Jay gave him the nickname The Doctor as well. I couldn't find that when researching. It doesn't seem to be on the internet, not in a way that I could find it. But I I remember hearing the story at some point that Jay said, we're not going to have a band member named Lindsay McDougal. (laughs) (laughs) Your name is now Dr. Lindemans. (laughs) What a weird way to get a nickname. I reckon just call him McDougal or something. (laughs) McDougal's great. Or Lindsay, it's his name. Yeah. Anyway. He still goes by it. He doesn't have to anymore. No, but he does. Uh, this was around the time I started getting into the band This when this album came out. Um, it was the first one. I was I borrowed it off a friend. You know, I don't know, 30 bucks or whatever they mm. used to cost. And I remember having an assignment where we had to write an animal-related poem for English class. And I handed it instead, I handed in the lyrics to their song, Guns Don't Kill Ducklings, Ducklings Kill Ducklings. <laughs> Do you remember that song? Yeah. I think, yeah. I think and then, the teacher was pretty baffled by it. But, you know, it's a poetry. So what do you do? He's like, yeah. it looks like he's it's written something there. I don't get it. I've put in the effort. <laughs> I've written a bunch sorry, of words. Sorry, I'm making a point <laughs> that you don't understand, lady. <laughs> did, you, did you, yeah, did you listen to Friends or Much? 
when you're younger? Ah, uh, yes, probably had a two couple of their albums. Was this one of them? Or yeah, that's ones? one of them. Yep. I had that one and... Well, I'm going to go through yeah, them. Yeah, so yeah, you'll, yeah. You'll know when you hear them probably. Uh, the one before that, Not So Tough Now, was the one with the, like a McDonald's that had been um, I remember seeing demolished. that, yeah. Did they get in trouble for that, that I, album I cover? Think, I don't think there was a lot of trouble for it, but it's sort of like, why would you? Was, they have been in trouble over the years, though, for their album covers. Are you going to talk about that? Is there some one of their albums? Well, I've talked about the album that had a dick sandwich yeah. on it. Yeah, <laughs> and, I mean, and the rejection got, letter on the back They They were banned from, uh, Dick Sandwich was banned from some stores. So I think there's little things, bits and pieces like that. But mm. yeah, let us know when you, because I don't, I don't know if I remember anything in particular that was worse than that, mm. than just being banned from some stores or whatever. Mm. Um, after the release of the album, the drummer Nat left, being replaced by their fourth drummer in six years, Mind Snare drummer Gordy Foreman, who remains with the band today. Um, so they're getting closer to their classic lineup now. Um, well, I guess this is, this is probably one of their classic lineups. Mm. Um, they toured in support of the album and headlined the Australian leg of the Vans Warp Tour as well as going over and uh, performing on the American Warp Tour as well. Sick. In 1999, they released A Man's Not a Camel, which was produced by uh, C- Californian Eddie Ashworth, who had previously recorded Sublime's huge self-titled album. Oh, it- very cool. Yeah, I did. I, we Sorry, we also listened to that album. When we were in Weed Hornet. Oh, yeah. That would have a big influence on Weed Hornet. Oh, a big influence. Tom the Singer definitely had Man's Not a Camel. <laughs> Remember that one? Do you, do you know that saying, Bob, Man's Not a Camel? So yeah. It's like in reference to, uh, do you want a drink? Yeah, mate, a Man's Not yeah. a Camel. <laughs> yeah. It's so dumb. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's a man. Do you want one or not? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah. You've used so many words to say yes or no. Uh, the album hit number 11 on the ARA chart. The ARA chart's the Australian... Um, mainstream chart, Mm -hmm. Uh, a new high for the band. And celebrations didn't last long, though, as the band announced they had to cancel their US tour due to Jay having a heart attack. Oh, what? Okay. Um, Jay has later said that it was the heart attack was a bit of an exaggeration, but there was some sort of a heart issue and he had to rest for quite a while. You don't fuck around with heart issues. No. You know? I don't. No. And you shouldn't either. It's pretty important. My, I was having like palpitations and my heart would race every now and then. I'd just be like lying down. It would just suddenly Whoa. race. Did you get that checked out? Yeah, I did. Because I was like, I'm not fucking around. In, even if it's something minor, yeah. if your heart stops, you're done. Yeah. I'm no doctor. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure that's true. You grow another hand, you can grow another leg. But Whatever. You, you can't head. grow another You can grow another head. Grow a head. But you can't, can't grow, grow a heart. heart. And some of our bloody politicians up in <laughs> On Capitol Hill, have proven that. Uh, <laughs> They've tried. They have tried. They've tried in jars, trying to grow them, but they can't. They can't do it, no matter how much money I have. Anyway, I, I was fine. That's oh, that's end good. Of that. There's a Saints player who's um, been on the long term injury list because he had heart palpitations. I think he got a pacemaker put in. Shit. And then it happened again in the preseason the following year. So he had all of 2019 out. And now he's hoping to start up again in 2020. So Jay's had heart issues. Yeah. How old is he by this point? When this was point, this? This is uh, late nineties, so end of nineteen ninety nine. So he would have been in his late twenties, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's young. Yeah, that is young. Really, even thirty is young. You know. Yeah. I even agree. early thirties. Yeah, I agree with that. Is young. Yeah. He's yes. still young up until you don't feel young anymore. I suppose. Really, age is just a number. It's, it's, just a, a, number. Construct, it's a construct. Really. Yeah. Right. Yes. That to cancel the US tour. That's right. But the chart success of A Man's on a Camel caught the attention of major labels. And in 2000, the band signed with Sony, uh, giving the band their biggest payday, with the band able to buy new equipment and even pay their rent for a couple of years. Whoa. Uh, but the band weren't happy with the album, uh, which was called Shut Your Mouth, and it didn't sell particularly well. Jay has described it as... A little more serious than our previous work, adding that after it was released, they realised it's pretty fucking shit. <laughs> That's funny, I, I miss that one. I kind of, I remember, you know, when you get to, a bit too cool towards mid to the end of high school, I started listening to more metal and less punk and I mm-hmm. thought Man's Not a Camel was a bit soft. Yeah. <laughs> they had slower songs, it was whatever. So I, cool I, I fell off them during A Man's Not a Camel and I totally missed Shut Your Mouth, which as it turns out is even the bands seem to say is their worst album. 
But I was listening to it today. I listened to that whole back catalogue today. That's the beauty of a punk band. All their albums are about half an hour long. And I reckon it's pretty good. Mm. It's no, I was expecting it to be really bad, but there's, it's got a bunch of I'm just looking songs. at it now. I'm enjoying that it's like their major label debut and they're like, nah, it's not really our sound, you know? Yeah. Like, what are you sold out? Track one is called Everything's Fucked. <laughs> 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 it goes for a minute 37. It's still punk. <laughs> Everything is fucked though, eh? Like that's still yeah. relatable now. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, like, That's yeah. like 20 years later and I'm still like, yeah. That song is evergreen. <laughs> uh, the album's still charted in the top 40, but uh, Jay has since said that the major label weren't a good fit for them as they didn't do the legwork or put up the posters in shops or get our CD in bizarre places that we often tour. Unlike Shock, a smaller indie label who did do all of that, as opposed to Sony, who had, who just had a bunch of telephone staff sort of calling around. So I guess they didn't they didn't know the tricks, mm. and it led to them having selling less albums than they did when they were an independent band, which right. is interesting. Possibly the album being pretty fucking shit didn't help either. <laughs> but I reckon if yeah, I still feel like if it went a different way, that album could have sold pretty well. But like I say, it still made the top forty. Mm. Uh, the Age reported that. Quote, Friends of Rom left Sony on amicable terms and signed to Epitaph Records, uh, which is one of the biggest punk labels in the world with bands such as Rancid and Pennywise for Australia and New Zealand. They remained with Fat Records in the US and Japan. In 2002, founding member Lex Feltham left the band. Uh, the official is the bass player. is the one who brought in the slap. <laughs> <laughs> he left that as a legacy for those to follow him. Um, the official word from the band was that he was booted after, quote, insisting that Friends of Rom should incorporate synth and guitar-shaped keyboards into their work, <laughs> which obviously is probably bullshit as well. I think he just, I imagine he just went like, oh, I'm 30 now. <laughs> I, wanna, yeah. I don't want to be in a punk band anymore. Uh, after holding auditions in Sydney, they recruited 18-year-old Adelaide bass player Tom Crease. The new setup seemed to work well. Uh, with the, they keep getting all these young members in. It is interesting. It's always um, young blood, isn't it? They yeah, Interesting. Uh, the doctor and and Tom both came in as eighteen year olds. I read that actually in a in a, an interview from ten years back or something. Someone asked, I think it was in a Thai. They were about to tour Taiwan, and uh, the interviewer asked the question, "How how old are you guys?" And Jay was like, "Oh, we kind of range in age a bit. Oh, I'm thirty. Our youngest member's eighteen. So I guess average age of twenty five. So maybe that's what it's doing. <laughs> It's like you guys, keeping me young. Yeah. <laughs> oh, average age of the pod? <laughs> <laughs> we bring you down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you do. What's our average age now? Like 33? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. <laughs> oh, death is near. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that is when Jesus died. Oh. Uh, it's actually slightly younger. Oh, God. God, you're a fucking killjoy. What is it then? Because we're, there's two 30-year-olds. Yeah, right. 29-year-olds. For, let me hold on to it. Sorry. Even younger than yeah, but right. Matt is 175. Okay, yeah. so so actually quite a bit older. Than Factoring that. that in and blasting it through the prism, <laughs> we are, the porcelain prism. Oh, the, oh, let me. That's where I did my best calculations. <laughs> uh, so the band's first album for Epitaph was called San Sushi which uh, we mentioned very late in last week's episode. That's right. Uh, was a return to form, debuting at number 24 on the ARIA charts and featuring songs such as Russell Crowe's Bands, A Fucking Pile of Shit, <laughs> Bucket Bong and World's Fucked as Cunt. In 2003, singer Jay Wally was at a protest rally uh, against mandatory detention for asylum seekers in Sydney when he got caught up in a ruckus and was arrested. But they got lucky, or he got lucky, as according to Jay... We got arrested, but it turns out the cops were fans. <laughs> the cops were saying, Jay, really like your new stuff. It's really cool. As we were leaving, they were saying, Jay, you should write a song about this. <laughs> this is funny because their, their album, the Sands Lucia, has a song on it called Who'd, Who'd Be a, be a Cop. cop. Yeah. And it's very anti-police. <laughs> very anti-cop. Is this that? Yeah. Yeah, I remember my sister's uh, drunk friend. <laughs> well, yeah, he was a drunk once. <laughs> And big, no, no, he's the drunk friend. Big fan of punk music and he was being fined for drinking in, in public and he started singing this <laughs> lyrics of Who'd Be A Cop. <laughs> it's pretty, it's very anti-police. It's yeah, funny it's that the of, cops are like, oh, hey, yeah, I guess big like, fan. They see the, see the comedy in it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, in 2004, the band played the Bass in the Grass Festival in Darwin. Um, radio presenter Jackie O from the Kyle and Jackie O show. <laughs> you know the story? <laughs> Was set to MC the day, but she ar- arrived nine hours late. 
Uh, as the band were about to take the stage, they were told the show was running overtime. They would have to cut a few songs out, cut their set short. And then as they were about to go on, Jackie O finally rocked up and, and go straight out to um, talk to the crowd. And in response, they were just sort of sitting in the wings with their gear ready to go out. Uh, Lindsay, the doctor, started playing a riff from ACDC's Thunderstruck, drowning out her voice. <laughs> <laughs> it's very funny. Um which upset Jackie O. She left the stage uh, and then they played their set. But they sort of went out going, fuck pop stars. <laughs> <laughs> fuck pop stars, which was the show she was presenting on at the time. And they were talking about how shows like Australian Idol and pop stars, which are like American Idol. They probably don't need translating for that. <laughs> pop Idol in England are hurting the Australian music industry so record labels can make a quick buck. Basically saying that at the time they'd take the winner of Australian Idol and the five runners up, and then, but also drop other acts. Mm. So drop established acts to get them on, sell a bunch of records, and then drop these reality show contestants as well. Uh, on the next episode of the Kyle and Jackie O show, this interview is on YouTube, which will be linked in the show notes. They phoned Jay on air to confront him about the incident and told him that Friends Are On would not be played on the All Stereo <laughs> network anymore. To which Jay responded, The thing is, Kyle, have you ever played us on the All Stereo <laughs> network before? <laughs> And they're like, yeah, I, yeah, it's on Triple M, I think. But it was it was a, about a 10-minute thing, and it's a bit up and down. I remember listening to it at the time and thinking, like, geez, Jay was all over that. Now it's sort of like, oh, there is something a bit weird about I don't know. But it's, right, because I haven't heard it in so many years. But, yeah, I remember when YouTube first started, you, know, you hear that. And, you're like, and he's oh. like, yeah, and, you know, Kyle is famously sanctimonious. And yeah. <laughs> he was so contradictory as well, Kyle, and he sort of at one point he's like, you will never play on the station again. He's like, you never did. And he's like, oh, we could. And then he's going, mate, if you've just got to get the right pe- – I've never – no one's ever put your music in front of me. Well, I've, you know, if you just got to get the r- music in front of the right people. And then he's going, your music shit, mate. I'm never – we're not – that's why no one's playing it. It was like, oh, man, you, you're sort of in such a weird cycle. It doesn't and quite make sense. Are we putting music in front of Kyle? <laughs> I don't, I don't. Is he the one to, I, to ask? I thought he was doing Trial by Kyle. Yes. Yes, he's doing a Judge is, Judy style show. It, yeah, that's, a, that's in Australia now he's doing a Judge Judy style show. But back then – he was doing trial by Kyle and it was trialing demos for new <laughs> <laughs> CDs. Um, the 10 minute convo ended with some bickering before Kyle hung up on Jay and then said, Man, what a cock. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I mean, out of context. Does sound a bit like he's complimenting Man, him. Man, what a, what a cock. cock. <laughs> <laughs> that thing was awesome. It's all about tone. Wow, there, yeah. man, what a cock. Ooh. I should say, during a Jackie O, did she made it? Pretty clear. She was like, it was pretty upsetting to her. She was sort of, I think she felt a bit uh, bullied by it or whatever. Yeah. And uh, and Jay did sort of apologise for that. But, yeah, it was a weird, and it ended up just, like, r- ramping up at the end with us sort of just talking over each other. And Why was she nine hours late? I, yeah, I'm not sure if it was a flight <laughs> or what, but it sort of feels sure, like, like just nine finally hours. go, look, I'm not coming now. Yeah. And not when you get there, sort of jump out in front of another band. Yeah. You can sort of understand why they'd be annoyed. But that was, yeah, I can also understand why it would why have been would really mean. distressing for her. Yeah, For yeah. sure. And did anyone go to this music festival to, to hear her? Yeah, why the fuck? No, I'm I don't think so. The- I think, well, that's what Jay was sort of explaining in the interview as well, is like just before she went out, there was another person talking and it was like the basic, what do you call the territory's premier? It's like the head minister or something. Yeah, right. And, and they were just getting yelled at by the crowd and then it was sort of going the same way. They were like, just get to the fucking music. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, what you go to a music festival for, funnily enough. Yeah. For the music. So it was it was kind of like, anyway. Not to see Jackie O. Jackie O Festival. Now, that's my kind of festival. The funny uh, thing was the Kyle threat of, uh, yeah. apparently they also they also called up uh, their record label before this interview and said, you're finished in this industry, you're d- dead in this town and that sort of stuff. And one of Jackie O's security guards threatened violence against friends of Rome on the day. And Jay's like, did you know about that, Jackie? And she's like, yeah, I did, but... And then I didn't really... I was interested to hear where that was going to go. Because he goes, do you do you, do you think that's good behaviour or something? And she's like, yeah, but... And then it sort of she doesn't get to explain it. So, so it's, weird. It's such a, a real... I'd love to know, like, the whole story because it's, it's really just this clip. I'd love to know why Kyle thinks that he has the power to call a record label and go, you're done. 
Because I'm Kyle. Yeah. Fuck off. No one cares. They, they did. Uh, Oz Stereo executives later said, uh, that's not really his role. We have a, a, <laughs> we have a we have the music team yeah. who, who do pick the songs, and that's been made clear to Kyle. Do you, do you think that he also, like, he goes to the McDonald's drive through and he's like, you didn't put a pickle in my burger. You're, You're finished. Done. <laughs> You'll never make another burger in this world, McDonald's. He's incredible. Uh, media. It's been made clear to him that's not his role. <laughs> <laughs> they brought him in for an interview and had to go through his contract. Now, nowhere here in the job description <laughs> does it mention you making or breaking record labels, for example. <laughs> Just want to clarify that's not in your wheelhouse. You don't, you don't think you do that, do you? <laughs> media watcher on ABC TV later that week featured the interview uh, or clips from it with host David Marr saying, Kyle and Jackie O are part of a new generation of radio thugs. Love Media wow. Watch. From the ABC. Nice. Love Media Watch. Uh, in a strange twist of fate, Jane the Doctor got the gig of hosting Triple J's breakfast show the following year, <laughs> making them direct competitors of Kyle and Jackie O. <laughs> You're done in this town. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> shit. I thought I'd heard that name before. <laughs> so the situation was made stranger still by the fact that Friends of Rome were at one point banned from Triple J, apparently being played on there. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but apparently that is believed that they were banned. Banned. Is that it the doesn't language? happen all that often on Triple J. I think it was they were giving Triple J shit, but that doesn't feel like a thing Triple J would... And especially when, unless there was a huge turnover in um, decision makers there, that they would end up in the plum on hair on yeah. hair ro- hosting job. Yeah. So yeah, it feels like I don't know about that, but um, their show included uh, it was sort of it was just a bit of fun, basically, <laughs> and in- included one segment I remember quite well. Uh, it was called the Friday Fuckwit, where <laughs> listeners would call in and nominate who should get the title of the Friday Fuckwit. <laughs> and after every nomination, there'd be the same sting would play, Friday Fuckwit. <laughs> it was a sort of bleep over fuck. Very fun. Uh, <laughs> I remember that, actually. In 2006, the band released their seventh studio LP titled Forever Malcolm Young, which was in reference to ACDC's rhythm guitarist, uh, Malcolm Young. Yeah. The album was funded with money J1 in a, in a South African casino. <laughs> <laughs> of course. What, I, what do you mean? I only just learnt this this week. This is fascinating. Um, J recounts a story in an interview saying, it was just some <laughs> random fluky win from $1, on, from $1 on a blackjack table, playing like a promotional square they were having, where if you got three seven of diamonds, you got the jackpot. So, yeah. I got this at like 10 o'clock in the morning at some random casino in Durban or somewhere. I won something like 197,000 rand, which is like 40 grand Australian. <laughs> From a buck. That's From awesome. Buck. That's so good. And he goes, and yeah, came back and went, ah, what will I do with that? So we did that record. <laughs> what a way to fund it. That's so great. Uh, the album featured, and this was the, this was the album that got me back into them, and then I mm. went back to San Sushi and... And I reckon since then, just gone from strength to strength. This one featured tracks like Johnny Ramone was in a fucking good band, but he was a cunt. <laughs> Ren Wine and Alter Boys and I'm a backwards fucking useless piece of dog shit and I vote. The album debuted at number 34 on the RA charts. <laughs> when asked about those who get offended by their use of language, Jay responded, I often get amazed how people uh, often get offended by language, especially in Australia when it's nothing you wouldn't hear at your local office or schoolyard. Uh, throughout this time, Jane the Doctor was still hosting the breakfast show on Triple J. From 2007, they were also joined by Miff Warhurst. It is a funny thing about language. Like, I reckon you're hearing Fs and Cs. I don't know why I'd, I'm censoring myself after saying both of them a lot today, but uh, you hear them all over the place. Yeah. I don't know. Well, maybe it's because, like, if you're standing... With your friend and your friend's two small children, oh, yeah. you automatically censor yourself without even realising it. Right. You're not dropping Fs and Cs. So, well, you shouldn't. You probably shouldn't. I should, or you I do should. and apologise. Oh, sorry. Sorry, you little c- <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Damn it. Ah, every time. Oh, I made it worse. So you don't know who's listening. I'm crying. You don't know who's in the car on radio who's right, listening. Right, yeah, that's and true. It, and there's also broadcast code, so you're just not used to it. So yeah, when the it, show goes out at 7 o'clock, then oh, I'll say stuff. So if you do hear it, you go, ooh, don't really... I don't usually hear that about this time. But, but that's fair for radio, but we're talking about his albums. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's weird for people to be offended. On by Triple J, you'd normally just do a language warning at the top yeah, but for we, those sort of reasons. We're one of few that will play songs not censored. Yeah. We're not allowed to say F. <laughs> 
We can say other words. Um, but, yeah, you have to issue a language warning. But we still get texts sometimes of people like, I've got children in the car. How can you play this? It's like, why turn it down or change yeah. it? It's not on It's not on us to know who's in the car. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, and you must know this is just what this station does. Yeah. Go listen to something shit then. Put on Smooth <laughs> FM. Yeah. If That's you, know, if you want Michael Buble. Hey, so smooth. Uh, so there's a radio station in Australia called Smooth FM, and it's uh, I'm to this for the listeners. It looked like I was telling you about it. You've just brought it up. But they play um, smooth songs mm. and classic hits. And their hosts, and I'm guessing they just record it all in a day. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Smash it out. And just smash out all these forward Generic and back announcing things. so many jokes. One of my favourites, who was it? I think it was Australian actor Andrew Datto, one of the Dattos. Mm. I might have mentioned this before. Maybe Cameron also. Datto. Maybe Cameron Datto. I think it's it was Cameron, Cameron Datto. Datto. And he goes, hmm, maybe, <laughs> what are you up to at the moment? Before I play this next track, maybe you want to... Slide into the bath, open a nice bottle of red. So creepy. <laughs> Don't tell people to get into the bath. Also, most commercial stations, a lot of it's pre-recorded. Yeah, right. Like all the weekend shows on, uh, not all, but a lot of the weekend shows on like commercial. I reckon, feel uh, like all you done can, on a Friday. Normally can tell, I reckon. Yeah. They just want, that's just to save money from turning on the lights on the weekend. Yeah. That's, Who wants to work on the weekend? Yeah. Yeah, smart. Yeah. But I'm going to work after this. I'm going to work at 1 a.m., yeah, um, definitely does not need to be done live. No, you could definitely put a tape on. <laughs> Just play some music. <laughs> I don't have to be there, but I'm going. I think that's actually how uh, Jay and the Doctor saw. They did some overnights. I yeah. remember one time listening to them uh, in the middle of the night. must have been one of their first times, and they played a Pantera song. I think it was Five Minutes Alone. And I think they were making fun of it, but I didn't. I don't know if I got the irony till later. But they go, ah, oh, still sounds as fresh as it did back then. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe they were. Maybe they were being genuine. Maybe, maybe they loved they were it. Being genuine. Uh, Jay announced he was quitting radio to travel uh, at the end of the year. That's of 2007. But the doctor continued on in the role. Now joined by Robbie Buck and Marie Cardi, as uh, what was that? I can't remember what that was called. Robbie, Marie, and the doctor. I think. <laughs> yep. Mm. Uh, Where do they get their ideas? <laughs> <laughs> In 2010, that was a really good show. I really enjoyed all those shows. In 2010, did I say initially they took, Jane and the Doctor took over from Adam and Will, which is one of the iconic mm -hmm. breakfast shows. All great shows. What great memories. Yeah. In 2010, Tom Ballard and Alex Dyson took over the breakfast shift and the Doctor started hosting the afternoon show solo. In 20 Much better hours. Yeah. M much better alarm time. <laughs> and it, and it's, it's like a more chilled out show as well, right? It's it's all a bit more relaxed. In the morning, mm. it seems to be the shows have to be like we're on. Pew, Quick pew, pew. section segments of bang, bang, bang. You're also getting banter. up at like 4.30 in the morning. That's no good. Yeah. That's no good. Drive show, you rock up at like 10. Love that. Done at 6, out you go. Fantastic. It's the dream. It's the perfect hours. Perfect hours. In 2010, I don't know why I'd, I'd probably talk too much about the radio days, but anyway, I thought that would be interesting to at least Jess. In and it was. <laughs> In 2010, Frenzel played a festival with a lineup including Megadeth, uh, Descendants, No Effects, Gua, and Dropkick Murphys. I think it was called the No Sleep Till Festival. I couldn't find this confirmed anywhere, but I remember there being a story that this was Descendants' first time they toured in Australia for ages, and um, they were going to have to cut their set a little bit short because of the like the local council curfew. And I believe that the bands all chipped in and said, well, we'll all pay the fine <laughs> so that they can keep playing. But I couldn't find that confirmed anyway, but I'm pretty sure that's a true thing. So Frenzel and, and NoFX and others chipped in. Must have been what, a few grand. Yeah, it'd to... be a bit. Uh, the following year they released Smoker at the Pet Food Factory, which was <laughs> recorded in Colorado by Descendants drummer Bill Stevenson. Uh, for me, this continued the run of every album release being better than the last one since then, Sushi. I reckon they just – it's one of those bands, you know, I was at, at the point of like, oh, I like your older stuff at, when I was too cool in mm. high school. And now I'm like, actually, they're getting better with every album. It's, the sound is getting bigger and the um, songs are catchier and faster and more fun. You don't think they peaked with Dick Sandwich? I don't think they did. <laughs> <laughs> Although that is maybe maybe the best album title. That is, it is very good. Could you just put your dick in bread? Yeah. Why are we severing these dicks? Just put your dick in bread. Yeah. Nice fresh piece of bread might feel nice too. <laughs> oh, I'll have a light fresh ride. out of the oven. <laughs> I'll get a crusty I was Vienna. Thinking, I was thinking like just a tip top white, so it would just look like a sausage in bread. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking that you like hollow out a cob loaf. 
<laughs> you do whatever you want. Yeah. It's your dick. Just place it on there. there it's you your go. dick. It's your life. <laughs> you do whatever you want to do. But if I had a dick, I'd be putting it in a piece of bread like a little sausage. Yeah. <laughs> if I had a dick. Jess, come on. Yeah. Big sausage. <laughs> Thank you. If, you have, if, you're, if you're going to get one. Get a big one. Dream big. Yeah, you're right. Uh, the album reached number 14 on the ARA charts and featured tracks When My Baby Smiles at Me, I Go to Rehab, <laughs> Knuckleheads, and Mummy Doesn't Know You're a Nazi. Uh, <laughs> Jay, explain the story behind that last one. It was, a, it was based on a real story. This is Jay speaking now. That was when punk band Propaganda uh, were... Was I saying Propagandy. That right? Propagandy. I thought I fucked that up. This is when punk band Propagandy were touring a couple of years ago. They had quite a lot of interest from some neo-Nazi websites with basically all of these tools sitting online writing all this hateful shit. So our manager was promoting the tour and he was telling us about how the police were aware of some of these websites and that they have some pretty genuine bad dudes involved with them uh, who were pretty violent guys. So they take the threat seriously. Anyway, they'd been following this one guy and they'd been tracking his computer use. And the police ended up going around to his house just before the propaganda. Propagandy. Fuck. <laughs> before the propagandy tour. And when they got there, they realized he was a 16 year old kid and his mum actually had no idea that he was a Nazi. Can you imagine? So, yeah, I thought that was a pretty good idea for a song. <laughs> and so, so the, were the Nazis anti propaganda or they were fans? Anti propaganda. Right, yeah. I was going to say, because they are. Because they're a very political. Progressive kind of band. Hmm. Would be so funny to be a cop. Yeah, I'm like, you're thinking you're going to get this guy. Yeah, you're in full the, SWAT. Yeah, the SWAT team's <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> on the ground, on the ground. It's oh, no. kid. Oh, it's, oh, holy shit. And his mum's, get in here, Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say Kevin as well. What have you been up to? Kevin. Kevin, I've burnt the muffin. Kevin. Kevin, please. Nazism? Really? Get, have you got your homework done at least first? <laughs> Wild. No, mine camp before dinner. <laughs> Couldn't you just play video games like the other boys? <laughs> in 2013, the band were gearing up for a national tour with Descendants, Body Jar and the Bouncing Souls, which I had tickets to, when they announced they had to cancel due to, quote, sudden and unexpected illness. As it turns out, Jay suffered from two seizure, seizures out of the blue. It was believed he had a brain tumour. A little while later, Jay posted on the band's Facebook Facebook page uh, explaining this. This is one of the stories where I'm like, oh, this this has got to be told on a Do Go On episode. Mm. Um, so it's it's lengthy. He describes it as a bit of a doozy. So. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'll let Jay take it from here. On the 25th of Jan, I was loading a base cabinet into my car at the pet food factory for the a Chinese Burns unit gig that night when I started to lose vision and feel pretty strange. I thought I probably shouldn't drive right now, so I went inside and tried to buy water. I was looking at the coins in my hand and realised I had no idea what they were and what they were for. Luckily, my friend Davis from Front End Loader was there and after a brief moment of thinking I was on drugs, ushered me down a corridor where I proceeded to have the first of two seizures. This has never happened before and I'm so grateful Davis was there with a cool head to see me through it and call an ambulance. The next thing I remember was waking up in hospital with an incredible, incredibly painful back and neck and my family all around trying to smile through stressed expressions. I also have a vague memory of Lindsay McDougall by my bed laughing at how he'd seen me in the nude. <laughs> <laughs> what a good friend. <laughs> the actual doctor came and told me I'd had two seizures. They'd scanned my brain and found a small tumour about one centimetre in diameter, the nature of which he wouldn't know until they operated, removed it and sent it for a biopsy. Worst case would be a malignant melanoma. The best would be a benign tumour or an infection of some kind. I didn't feel a lot of positivity from the neurosurgery team. The earliest they were going to be able to do the op was Feb 14th. So, a uh, couple of weeks later. Yeah. What followed was a grim three weeks waiting for the operation, trying to think, uh, trying to not think the worst. My beautiful wife, family, and friends that knew were amazing during this time, cooking food, looking after our three-year-old, sending super positive messages and phone calls, and generally trying to lift me out of what I reckon was the bleakest time of my life. Gordy Foreman, the drummer, visit boosted my spirits regardless of his real motive to check 
which of the pills I'd been prescribed he could use recreationally. <laughs> <laughs> there were several. What, what do you got? <laughs> anyway, hey, you, buddy, you, okay? you feeling good? Uh, you what do I got you on? Uh, yeah. Out of interest, do, can I get you? Do you need me to get anything for you? Or? <laughs> Any spares? Or, <laughs> uh, Valentine's Day brain surgery. Sounds like a Ramon song. <laughs> they gave me general anaesthetic and cut a 10 centimeter rectangle at the back of my back left of my skull which took out the offending alien and put the skull piece back. Oh. It was over in about three hours. That's mm. wild, taking skull out and replacing yeah. skull. Yeah. Uh, two hours later, I was in intensive care when the head of the neuro team came in and said, good news, looks like it was some kind of infection. Holy shit, the relief I was feeling was overwhelming, not just for me but for my family as well. I felt like I could breathe for the first time in weeks. No cancer, or as Gordy put it, Happy Valentine's Day, you tumulus fuck. <laughs> <laughs> now, where are the pills? <laughs> you don't need them now. <laughs> so what the hell was it? How did I get an infection in my brain? I was tested for all sorts of things over a couple of days until finally they got some results back from the lab. Here's an approximation of the conversation. Have you been to Central America in the last few years? Asked the doctor from the infectious diseases department. Sure, we think it could be a parasite. Again, is this somehow related to Pico, the botfly larva I picked up in the same region? It's <laughs> another story. No, this is specifically neurocysticirosis. Basically the egg from a pig tapeworm. <laughs> a pig? I'm fucking vegetarian. How did I get the egg from a fucking pink worm in my brain? They then very calmly explained to me the life cycle of this thing. This is a bit gross. This is my understanding. Skip forward if you don't like gross stuff. This is my understanding of it. So the tapeworm eggs live in pig flesh, most common in uh, Central America, but found in loads of other countries too. The pig is killed and the meat undercooked and eaten by old mate. Old mate grows a tapeworm in his intestine, which eventually produces eggs. Old mate goes to El Baño. <laughs> Doesn't or the uh, the porcelain porcelain p- prison <laughs> doesn't <laughs> doesn't wash his hands properly, then busies himself. If I said El Banyo, right, I don't want to get any Banyo. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> I couldn't get propaganda right though. Have I said it wrong again? No, you said it right. That, that time. was right. All right. Um, so he doesn't wash his hands properly, then busies himself cooking my vegetarian burrito. Gross. Uh, once in my stomach, they never become tapeworms, but they migrate into the muscle, most of the time causing no problem, and you'll never know it's there. The only place they'll have problems is if they make it to your brain or eyes. Oh. Once in the brain, the body reacts by sealing it in a kind of cocoon or cyst. Oh, where it wow. It quite happily lived for four fucking years. It's only when it dies that the body has some kind of inflammatory response, resulting in swelling, which in turn led to seizures. I'm out of hospital now, finally after an extended stay due to picking up two separate infectious post-operation. Oh. Two separate infections post-operation. Bloody hell. Fuck Headaches, hell. fevers and the likes. Ugh. What a nightmare. Uh, if it wasn't for the fear of death and the horrific pain, I've actually been living close to my dream lifestyle, lying down, watching movies and bathing in opiates. I don't feel <laughs> like I've retained any deficits from the brain surgery, but I guess only time will tell. Perhaps the slice will be taken out of my golf swing. <laughs> <laughs> Good line. Uh, my friend Clem thinks I'll become racist. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's funny. Sorry about the Descendant shows. I'm sure I was more bummed than anyone that I was silly enough uh, that was silly enough to buy tickets because we were on the bill. I heard it was great. I'm having it was great. I still went <laughs> along. I would like that were probably the band I was looking forward to the most on the lineup, but the other three bands are sick anyway. I feel like there was someone replaced them, but I can't remember who it was. Um, I'm having Taco. a... Taco. <laughs> Don't mention tacos, him. That's what got him in this pig Oh, mess. yeah. Isn't that gross? And what hands, a way to mate. find that out and be like, oh, for four years that has been... Yeah, yeah it's been there the and whole you, time. And you would think, oh, I'm not, I don't eat meat, so I'm not going to cop any of these. Mm. Uh, Yet he has two parasite stories, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> He said, I'm having a hard time putting into words the depth of gratitude I have for the love I've felt for my amazing wife, my family, this band and my friends. So that'll have to do in this forum. I'll get emo with you over a beer real soon. Love, shit for brains. It's kind of beautiful. It's a real nice sort of heartfelt message, but a real fucked story. Awful between. story. Oh, wow. my God. That is full on. Yeah. I, I and then infections 
post op as well. Like, yeah. oh man, let Come it on. be over. <laughs> yeah. Let me go home. That does feel unfair. Yeah, totally. Share the infections around, can't you? But how? Ex- well, I mean, it's it's gross, but it's good that it wasn't a tumor. Oh. Like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. They could take it out. It's you really know, all the that. Best case scenario. Yeah. And I believe, like, this is a couple of years later now. I, b- I believe he hasn't, as far as I know, he hasn't felt any um, long term brain effects from the surgery. Good. Uh, the run of weird luck for the band continued when, at a show in 2015, drummer Gordy Foreman came to the front of the stage saying, pretty sure if you want to stage dive, it's simple. Um, he then dived in the crowd. <laughs> on the video, like I've seen this on video, he, he then instructed the crowd, here's the, here's the one, two, three, dive. Stand up here. Then he walked away from the mic. as one, two, three, and he dived into the crowd. Um, oh, before no. getting thrown back towards the stage, landing upside down on the barrier. Ow! In a video of the incident, you can hear the bass player Tom go, don't break his arm, please, he needs that. And singer Jay says, oh, oh, that's no good. Oh, no, he's broken his arm. Oh! And then they're carrying him off in the video. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Start about saying it's very simple. This is all you gotta do. And it ends with him going, Oh my god, oh fuck. <laughs> the band later released a statement saying, You gotta admit, we're pretty great at irony. <laughs> <laughs> a dude in the crowd at his twenty second Friends of Rom show tried to stage dive and he sucked. So Gordy, being the benevolent soul he is, got up from behind his drum kit to show the young gent how it's done. Unfortunately, a combination of an enthusiastic crowd, a selfless drummer, and an unforgiving crowd barrier meant that Gordy's humorous landed in two pieces, snapped in half like a drumstick. Oh. So he was he was out of action like mid tour as well. Um, so had to delay a few shows and oh, get a replacement drummer. Oh, you feel like drummer. an idiot. And there's a mid, not mid only mid tour, but mid show. So they finished the show as a three piece. Tom, the bass player, ended up playing drums. <laughs> Jay sang and played bass. And they sort of just got through the show. But, yeah, you fuck. You'd feel like such an idiot. You'd be so embarrassed. <laughs> oh. Which is why I never stage dive at our shows. You yeah. know? I know how to, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty simple. It's very simple. It's Here, I'll show you. I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> you guys stand over there. <laughs> Two of you can catch me, surely. Um, uh, a few months later, he was good to go again, though. So he okay. recovered. He still drums for them. Very and good. he still drums for Mind Snare as well. Are you familiar with Mind Snare? Yeah, much heavier. Heavier. Another real cool Mel- They're a Melbourne band. So he's a Melbourne guy. They kind of spread around Australia a bit. Started as a Sydney band but for a long time. They had the bass player in Adelaide, drummer in Melbourne, and then the other two in Sydney. Um, the, the album release that he was talking about, that was uh, album number nine, uh, was 2017's High Viz High T, which is their most recent album. Six year gap. So each each album of late has been a little bit slower to come out than the one before. It was recorded again by Bill Stevenson of the Descendants uh, in Colorado. Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> it featured my ranch in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> it featured tracks including Cun Act and of course Pigworm. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> Uh, when asked in an interview, how did Bill feel about the song Connect when Americans seem to find that word more harsh than Australians do, which we're aware of here at Do Go On, Jay replied, he's been to Australia quite a bit, so he gets the common vernacular of Australians. He's actually said he wanted to write the Descendants version of the song, which would be called Dick Move, which <laughs> is basically the American, American equivalent of Connect. <laughs> dick Move. Bit of a dick move. I don't feel like that is. Do you know how offensive that is here? <laughs> I mean, we also say dick move. Do we? That's a, that's a dick move. Yeah. That sounds Amer- I can only hear it in an American accent now in my brain. That's a dick move, mate. Do we say? Yeah. That's a bit of a Oh, act. sorry. Younger people do, yeah. Oh. Yeah, people oh, no. in their 20s say it. Do you yeah. say can act? No. Nah. Yeah, right. It's an old person saying it. I don't say that word. It's very offensive. Act. Yeah, I won't say it. <laughs> Dog act. Um, Shut. Oh, how dare you? Sorry about that. That's copyright. You can't say that anywhere other than <laughs> Triple J. <laughs> Triple J. Don't. You, hopefully, my music isn't going to get banned from the station. It definitely. Do you is. have that power? I have that power. Damn. In that, I will tweet at Richard Kingsmill. Am I finished in this town? Is that in your contract? Just, just so you know, um, <laughs> we have pe- other people that do that. <laughs> there is a music team. Just no, no, it's me. Um, we I actually decide. have other people who finish careers <laughs> at the station. <laughs> it's still funny they had to explain to Kyle. <laughs> Not your role. Yeah, you can't. 
you can't tell a record label that they won't work in this country again. Who the fuck do you think you are? I hate him so much. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't know. That's, I mean, it's fun. in my head as well, he's sticking up for his mate, right? That's why he's... Sure. But, it, I mean, he's gone about it in a weird way, but you can sort of understand... Yeah, I don't know, whatever. But I'm just non confrontational as well. So I wouldn't call him live on air. Yeah. And be like, bah, eh, eh. It's a fuck off. After all, I mean he called the called the record label off air and then called it Jay on air. It felt like at the time, because Jay for the most part stayed pretty calm and he, he I think he came off a bit better. Like, you know when those arguments where one of them gets a bit more heated? Yeah. He didn't do that as much. But I and I remember at the time being like it's weird that they even put that out. Yeah. <laughs> that that didn't go as well as they were hoping it's it would. Tight. I think on the YouTube one that's uploaded with the most views or something, or something like Jay from Frenzel owns Kyle <laughs> <laughs> Sanderlands or something. <laughs> uh, it was 2003. People used to say owns a lot. You wouldn't understand that. No, I, people was, talk. I was far too young. Uh, due, <laughs> due to hearing problems, bass player Tom Kreese left the band uh, after 17 years. So wow. he, he was a guy started when he was 18. So he was in the band, you know, half his life. Um, and that was, that happened really quietly because I saw him a couple months ago and I didn't even realise he'd left a band. I'm like, oh, new bass player. Or I just thought it was a fill-in bass player and then I realised later. So right. he's still slapping that thing? Oh, sure. Just quiet, more <laughs> quietly. Cause I, I was similar to um, uh, Brian Johnson from ACDC. He had to quit because of long-term hearing damage as well. And I think it's doctors say, you keep playing in this uh, yeah. loud rock band, you're going to lose it completely. And they're like, oh, I like hearing. So, yeah, it's a tough call, but mm. makes sense as Do well. Do you rejoin ACDC? Do they still tour now, though? I think they tour with, don't they? Axel Rose, I think, is full-time singer now, isn't he? Oh. Pretty sure. Mm. So uh, Tom was replaced by Michael Dallinger, who was formerly of Newcastle punk band Local Resident Failure, which is a, ba- a band that was named after a Friends of Rom song. Which is kind oh, of that's cool. nice. Right, and how old was he, 18? <laughs> <laughs> he, lo- he, he, looked, uh, he looked like he was probably 30-ish. Probably. Okay, a bit more age-appropriate. <laughs> age-appropriate. <laughs> DiCaprio style. Um, <laughs> a bit young, mate, oh. for a bass player in your band. <laughs> Well, I always thought they must have just joked about this because that guy was only 18. I always jo- thought that they, when the other guy left, that they got a 15-year-old in the band for a while. Oh, maybe he they was younger. Was he 16? Maybe think, he was younger. Maybe they just joked about that. Right. Though, yeah. Because I'm obviously, yeah, it for the Because they're much. But yeah, I was always like, whoa, imagine being a teenager and you get to be in Friends with Ron. See, it's I'm, so cool. I'm only thinking about it as like having to hang out with a teenager all the time. Yeah. And like if you're 18, 19 listening to this, I'm sure you're awesome. But trust me, you don't want to hang out with me. And I probably don't want to hang out with you. We have different activities we want to do. We have different interests, at, you know? So if you're touring with someone who's like 10 years your junior, I don't know, do you not find that a bit weird? Like, would you go, would you, I don't know, I'm just going to shut no, up. No, I think, yeah, I think that probably makes sense. It probably depends on the person. Totally. I'm centuries older than you two and I still tour around with you. Yeah, we've tried to make you stop. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is this, was that a subtle Leave message? us alone, old man. <laughs> hey, guy, hey, gang. That's what Dave and I <laughs> what are you up to today? Yeah, that's what Dave and I are always shuckers? doing activities. Like shuckers? Yeah, should we go and own someone? <laughs> <laughs> I sometimes write own like pwn with a P because I think that's, you know, you guys, guys. <laughs> uh, I'm coming towards the end. I'll finish with this kind of nice story Jay told about how they got invited to play the Montebello Rock Fest in Montreal a couple of years ago. They were there and they weren't really sure why they were invited necessarily. Mm. Uh, they hadn't been uh, in Canada for a while. This is Jay again. He says, uh, how it happened was that there were these two Mexican kids who were driving their car in the south of Mexico on their way to the beach. And they picked up a hitchhiker. And uh, when they picked up the hitchhiker, they were listening to Smoko at the pet food factory in their car. And they told the hitchhiker, oh, this is our favorite Australian band. They're never going to come to Mexico, though, so we're never going to get the same. I was sort of bummed out about it. So the guy they picked up said, oh, I run this festival in Canada, and it's the biggest festival in the whole country, and I'm going to pay for that band to fly to my festival, and I'm going to pay for you two uh, guys to come up to Montreal to see your favourite band. And so we met these guys when we were backstage (laughs) at the festival in Montreal, and it was wild. What a wild story. Isn't that nice? I just looked at Dave and his mouth was agape. (laughs) That dude was hitchhiking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah, I run a very, very successful festival. I could easily afford to fly you to Canada. Um, are you going that way? I will not pay for a taxi or a bus. I know. Well, yeah, some that is... lives the lives the free and easy lifestyle. But love that. And then obviously, yeah, they play the festival. Hope that a few other people yeah, out there knew well, who they were. Footage of them playing, and that was I watched that video earlier today, and that was one. So they go. Uh, this was on a Fat Records compilation, and the crowd definitely uh, knew the song very well. There were a lot of crowd members singing along. So uh, that was an early song. That was something off Coughing Up a Storm as well. So, That's awesome. Yeah, that was like a 20, 23-year-old song at that point, or twenty, yeah, at least 20 yeah. years old. So the band's are over a quarter of a century old now. They um, they did a big tour a couple of years ago where they let the audience um, choose the songs on an online poll, which is sort of fun. They just got so many songs, and they, yeah, they're just really fun to see live. That's why I keep going back to see them. I saw them a few years ago, and the night before I tweeted at uh, the doctor. I said, hey, any chance you can play Lead Poison Gene or um, uh, Red Wine and Alter Voice? Because <laughs> they're two of my favorite tracks of theirs. And he, mes- he replied the next day. He said, oh, sorry, I missed it. Are you coming to the show tonight? I'll play him then. <laughs> but I wasn't, unfortunately, wasn't going to the That's Frank's so nice. show or whatever. But, yeah, what a legend. It does seem like a, a cool guy. I did read as well, uh, maybe just wrapping up, you know how I said you, uh, when Jay told his dad about his his change in direction that yeah. you'd never see a more disappointed human? Apparently now his his dad really supports what he's done. So <laughs> After kinda, 25 years. His dad now has a tattoo of a dick sandwich. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that's my boy. <laughs> and that is the end of my report. Oh, well done, Matty. So oh. it, was, it was cool. I'm, I was glad uh, that that was suggested as a topic because I do love them and I probably I never would have thought to have done them for some reason just because mm. I, I don't know why. I just thought um, it feels like a, maybe an in thing, but... The way uh, that Michael Nados explained it to me, he's like, they, they, had a, they had a bunch of interesting things happen to him. Yeah. Like the Jackie O controversy, like the pig worm, uh, Gordy breaking his arm. You know, there were bits and pieces that yeah. were interesting along the way. Um, and the Triple J stuff. So hopefully that was interesting for people who haven't heard of him. If you are into sort of catchy, fun, fun punk music, fast fun punk music, definitely look them up. They're all on Spotify and whatnot. Uh, and, yeah, you could start at any album, but... Um, I'd start at the more recent ones, maybe. Or maybe San Sushi is a good, good starting point. It's sort of, it was at the last live show, I saw him like, I think he even said this was like, th- this album was our rebirth yeah, after wow. the, the, you know, the major label weirdness uh, where they went sold out with the song Everything's Fucked. <laughs> <laughs> Sellouts. Well, that brings us to everyone's favorite section of the show, which mm. is, of course, the fact quote or. Question section. I just realised this is episode two twenty two. Two two two. Ideally, we would have done a report on Richie Benno. Two, two for two twenty two. <laughs> That's not a good <laughs> Benno, is it? Damn it! I just assumed I could do it. It feels like the easiest, the most impersonatable person there is. But but you fucked two it somehow. For twenty two. Oh, you're it's, making, worse. it's getting worse. Dave, can you do it? Uh, it's two for two two two. <laughs> Is that, is that, well, it's not better. I'm not doing it. I can't damn, do it. Chew for drink. Stop chew. it. Why are you saying chew? Stop. <laughs> <Isn't that> <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Everyone knows oh. Richie Banner. And, all right. right. We need to do, commentator. Now quickly do your Bill Laurie impression. And Oh, fuck off. Oh, he's <laughs> gone now. Fuck off. Oh, he's a great Victorian. <laughs> That's the 12th man's and, Bill Laurie. All right. Let me just, um, what if someone, he saw someone wearing uh, some... Um, something on their legs that they might wear, oh. like trousers, oh. and the brand is not Adidas but a similar. <laughs> oh, check out my Puma pants. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. I want to say it. <laughs> Puma pants, very oh. good stuff. <laughs> no, Tony Gregg's. Let's do fragments of the 12th Man albums. <laughs> Another one I always get runs through my head is uh, Tony Gregg. Someone talks about it ha- ha- holding a grudge, and Tony Gregg's like, grudge. To me, a grudge is just a place you park your car. <laughs> <laughs> that, is fu- that is funny. That's funny stuff. That is funny. Uh, oh. Okay, so it's time for Fat Quarter Question. This is where a Patreon supporter on the uh, – anyone can do this if you support us at patreon.com slash do go on. On the Sydney Schomburg Deluxe Memorial Package level, VIP, RIP, uh, and you can give us a Fat Quarter Question. You also get to give us a – Title for yourself this week. 
we have got with the title of Gamey, Gamey, Gamekeeper, it's Gary J from the UK. Gary J! I'm Gary J from the UK. We saw him again not too long ago, yeah, December. Uh, and he's given us a fact. Thank you so much, Gary. And the fact is, he also came to my stand up show in London. What a guy, Gary. One of my favorites. He says, Ducks' penises grow and shrink with the seasons. <laughs> <laughs> Four seasons and then condoms. <laughs> and he said in brackets, <laughs> All right. high five me, Dave. Okay. <laughs> you asked for reluctantly it. high five me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, he said in brackets, I'm trying to keep my fact short and sweet, just like Dave. <laughs> well, only because it's winter. <laughs> <laughs> it gets sweeter in the winter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank what you is so it much, in the Gary. summer? Long and sour. <laughs> <laughs> Long and Spring? tart. Yeah. Spring? <laughs> yeah, <it's> a... <laughs> salty. Salty. I'm going to keep going salty. Salty and wide and salty. <laughs> wide and salty. Like a, I don't know. And obviously in the autumn it's narrow. <laughs> woody. And woody. <laughs> ah, oaky. <laughs> mm. Mm. It's nutty and woody. On the back palate. <laughs> mm. uh, thank you so much, Gary J. And... Uh, giving himself the title of Professor of Crastination. It's Drew <laughs> Forsberg. Drew. And he's offered a quote. I love a quote. This is rare, which I, uh, but I appreciate him. And the quote is, Full cotch. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> That's off is to a in, good start. Is it in English? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to get a quick translator in. Uh-huh. Do, 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 Google Translate. Okay, okay. Yes, okay, sure. <laughs> Full court shot from Thorias. He's really showing us what a man with a cannon in his chest can do. That's Marv Albert from Futurama. Great quote. <laughs> well, that's something for everyone there. <laughs> <laughs> I like full court personally. <laughs> mm. Makes me think of a makes me think of a food court. Oh, I love a food mm, court. Snack. So many options. Yeah. You can all get different foods. You, you know can also- Futurama fans? Yeah, I, like, I, like show, yeah. I cannot place that quote. Can you? Uh, I'm I'm putting it together in my mind. They're watching a basketball game. There's a man with a can in his chest. <laughs> maybe it's probably um, maybe like a, a future version of the Harlem Globetrotters or something. Mm. You're, you're I, jumping to a lot of conclusions. I'm, I'm um, and I respect that. Thank you so much. But I do, I love. I've seen every episode a couple times. I've I've been thinking about it. Like, I want to go back and watch it all again because. I'm losing memory, um, which has been fun because I've watched a few things recently as if it was for the first time. Mm. I saw a movie recently. I just I don't remember any of it. It was it's great fun. What was it? Funnily enough, cannot remember. <laughs> but, <laughs> it was not long ago. But you enjoyed it? I remember last week thinking, I don't recall any of this. I'm going along with the twists and turns here. What was it? No, what was it? I can't remember. Total Recall? Fuck. <laughs> Oh, no, it was... Um, That's so good. You can't remember shit. You didn't get it, but that was good. It was uh, Midnight Run. Oh, yeah. Which was recommended on Twitter or somewhere by Tony Martin. He said it's the movie that he would recommend to anyone. If you didn't know anything about your taste, he'd recommend Midnight Run. And uh, it's great. I bought it on DVD and then I watched it uh, over the break and I'm like... You went and bought a DVD based on Tony Martin's recommendation on Twitter. That's lovely. I'm what, kidding. That's what, fucking lame. Midnight, <laughs> what, it would have been at a bl- uh, blockbuster closing down thing where it was like yeah, an expense yeah. or something. But uh, it's a good, it's a real good movie. That would also, I would recommend it in the same way. I think it's a, a lot of good fun. One of the characters, sort of like a buddy thing, like a, a a copish guy played by De Niro is um, taking over a, a guy. He's taking a crim across town, oh. or across the country. And he can't get there on the plane. Or well, there's twists and stuff. I don't want to know spoilers. Don't but ruin it. They have to get across um, for him to collect his bounty. Right. And the, I can't remember the guy, the criminal guy is played by the, I think he was the dad from the Beethoven movies. Oh, okay. <laughs> but I reckon if yep. they did a modern retake, I'd I'd cast that same role because similar sort of performance um, as Broden Kelly in his role. Okay. I could just picture him in it so well. It'd be so good. I'd probably just get De Niro to stay as De Niro. So De Niro, De Niro and, and Kelly. Kelly. Yeah. Love that. Love that combo. Modern Midnight Run. Real good movie. Check it out. All right. Um, the other thing we like to do is thank a few other listeners. Yes. 
Uh, should I kick it off? How, what kind of game are you going to do this week? That's what I can't. Maybe I... a Friends of Rom type ty- song title? Yeah. Or... Or a band name or... A... Yeah. yeah. so we can do a song title. Or what pet would you name them after? Dave, what do you reckon? How about... Is there a way you can get up all their song titles? Yes, I've, I've got them all up here. And then we could just assign one at random to each person. Great. That song is dedicated to them. Oh, I love that. Beautiful. You look it up, listen to it, enjoy it, do something. <laughs> Apologies if it's rude. I don't apologise. Language warning. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops, we're 90 minutes in. My favourite language warning on Triple J, it goes like this. It sounds like Kate McLennan, actually. Uh, it might be. And it just says, this next song's got a little bit of cussing in it. <laughs> cussing. <laughs> I like it a lot. I always pick that one. Well, this Patreon section has a little bit of cussing in it as well. Uh, well, let me kick it off if mm-hmm. you if you want. From Wakefield in West Yorkshire, Catherine Groom. Catherine Groom. I like that name. Uh, shall I? And we, am I picking this song? Yeah, at random. All right, I'll pick it at random. <laughs> random. <laughs> You're not doing well today. You're so random. I'll pick them at random. Uh, bucket bong. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Well done. That's a good science one. That's a bit of a hit for them as well. So that's a great uh, choice there, Catherine Groom, Groom which you gave to me with your vibes. Mm. Imagine you rocking out to that in West Yorkshire. <laughs> <laughs> um, she only wants me for my bucket bong is sort of the refrain <laughs> of the song. Uh, thank you so much for all your support, Catherine Groom. What a goddamn legend. I would also love to thank from Clinton in CT. Would that be Connecticut, Dave? Connecticut. I'd love to thank Matthew Borkowski. Matthew Borkowski. And uh, all right, well, let's. Are you going random? You got one? Oh, no. I, all right, I'll just scroll down at random here. Uh, that's just not legal. <laughs> <laughs> that's just not <laughs> legal. <laughs> With that's in brackets for some reason. I love, <laughs> love a random bracket in there. Uh, that's great. There you go, Matthew. You're only two off genitals are funny. So close. <laughs> <laughs> They're so funny. Uh, they are so funny. What could have been? Can that, I thank some people too? Oh, that'd be so good if you could. <clears throat> I would love to thank from uh, Sandy Springs. In GA. What's GA? Georgia. Georgia. I would like General to thank admission. Chris Galanek. Oh, I've got one this time. Yep. Uh, from Cuffing Up a Storm. <laughs> Your song is Cones. Cones. That song's about smoking cones. <laughs> ah, a bit more literal, that one. It's sort of a love song. Oh, that's nice. That's oh. very nice. So there you go. Chris, enjoy that. And I'd also like to thank... Uh, from Milton Keys in Great Britain, I would love to thank Ben Johnson. This, ben Johnson. I imagine it would be Ben, who we've met multiple times. Yeah, yes, Ben. In Thailand and in England. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Milton Keynes. I, I don't know, I can hear it in his voice right now. <laughs> Hello, I'm from Milton Keynes. And what song <laughs> would be dedicated to Ben? All right. Going on the scroll again. When will I see you at the ICU? Oh. <laughs> Which is uh, a song. love song. Yeah, well, another love song about getting injured. Oh, right. Which is probably appropriate for this band as well. <laughs> <laughs> when will I see you at the ICU again? I see you being the intensive care unit. Unit. Thank you. <laughs> I think I got the tricky ones there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you to Ben. Thank Dave, you, Ben. Do you want to bring it home? All right. Thank you so much, Ben. I would now like to thank from Dagenham. Oh. Love that name. In Essex. I'd like to thank. Carol Duval. Carol Duval. Please, Carol Duval. Carol Duval. I love that. And your song is, if I can scroll now, Don't Touch the Rabbit. (laughs) That's good advice. Great advice. Any situation. You don't know what kind of diseases (laughs) it may have. Carol Duval, I mean, if we're fortune tellers and you see a rabbit, don't touch it because bad things could happen. Don't touch the rabbit. Thank you so much, Carol. Great names. Oh, Carol Duval. Mm. Dagging them. Love that. And I would also like to thank now from Newtown, New South Wales, where this band was formed. Oh, my God. Whoa. That's awesome. It's your hometown band, Christopher. Christopher Beaumont. <laughs> it's Christopher Beaumont. Yay. Whoa. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> you said it half it's a like second too early. Yeah. <laughs> Every other person in Newtown just went, no, oh, not me. <laughs> it's Christopher was, Beaumont. Sorry, I was looking over your shoulder there. Spoilers. Got excited. Uh, scrolling. Final be- scroll. Be still my beating off. 
<laughs> oh, I remember that song. I don't think I would have got that as at the time. It's sort of based on my beating heart. That's very funny. <laughs> very funny. <laughs> Isn't it funny that I loved this album and I, I just would not have got that joke? Yeah. <laughs> now you're just reading it out going, oh, ah, yeah. That's good stuff. So thank you, Christopher. Enjoy that. <laughs> Soundtrack to your life and your place of residence. <laughs> yeah. Place of home. Place of home. Thank you so much for everyone supporting us on Patreon. Those who have supported us for three years plus on the uh, on the $5 plus section get to also be entered into the most prestigious of, of places. My goodness. Not the porcelain prison, but <laughs> <laughs> the Triptych Club and or Triptych Club. And this week I'd love to enter into the club from Victoria, Matthew Webb. Who we we know and love. I mean we know and love all these people from mm. Victoria again from Melbourne as well from Hyatt Matthew Flanagan good friend of mine Matt Flanagan what a what a great friend <laughs> played golf with him over the break did you yep. that's nice real bad I'm not good at golf at so did Matt win. but you sometimes win tournaments yeah occasionally well you know like matey tournaments but you beat your mates I'm so they very really bad matey ones M- mate you know just a few mate- just matey ones a couple mates. of true blue <laughs> tournaments diggy die sort yeah. of tournaments you have a little swing yeah, with the rigid mates. ditch cut but I mean I yeah I'm because I play once or twice a year it's a real roll of the dice how it is occasionally I have a good day and then this day it was I made golf look hard this is my first shot it went as far sideways as it did forwards <laughs> <laughs> sort of like the kind of shot where you're like, how's that possible? How, like, you can't do that on purpose. That, that is, is a, that is a technically a trick shot. Yeah, it is. Tiger Woods couldn't do it if he wanted to, but I did it. I made it look easy and made golf look very hard. Uh, so, yeah, Matt Flanagan's in there. And, well, that that's all the, no, hang on. And also uh, from Seattle, Washington, Alex Wu. And finally, I'm just trying to do the maths to see. <laughs> and finally, from Shepparton in country Victoria, Shep Life, John T. O'Neill. Th- oh, thanks, th- you legends. Thank you to all you legends. So cool to have you in the Triptych Club. I uh, hope you're wearing something nice because it's a classy it's a, <laughs> <laughs> it's a classy little nook. It's a business cash minimum. It is. And that's why Dave is typing all these names in golden font on our page on our website at some point. One, you've just got to learn right. JavaScript or something, don't you? Yeah, I've got to learn to type. <laughs> Typing. What do you mean you've got to learn to type? Your excuses are getting weirder. <laughs> we know you can type, Dave. I've seen you do it. No, you haven't. Think about it, have you? <laughs> yes. You haven't. you haven't. Yes, Dave. Come on. I have video footage of you typing. <laughs> Prove it. <laughs> I just Find said it. I have video footage. Yeah, well, prove that you've got it. Hmm? Okay, I'll get it now. Can I see proof of that video? <laughs> what, the video? No, no, I want proof that that video exists. <laughs> Dave, you've lost your mind. <laughs> remember, the glove don't fit. <laughs> yes, go on. He's well, lost his mind. Yeah, can't remember the rest. All right. Well, Some, Something catchy. <laughs> wrap it, it up, Dave. Wrap it up. <laughs> that is the end of the episode. Thank you so much for... Uh, Joining us, we'll be back next week with another episode to tantalise your ears. Oh. I'm tantalised already. Ooh. Can't wait. Yeah. Is we'll it a, it's a Dave report next week. That's right. Week. It's a fun one, I reckon. Uh, it's a topic that's been voted for already, so fa- fate has already chosen what I'll be talking about, and I think it'll be a good report, so hang out for that. We'll be back next week. Uh, get our tickets. Those tickets to the Melbourne Comedy Festival will be awesome. But until next time, we'll say thank you and goodbye. Later. Bye. This podcast is part of the Planet Broadcasting Network.